So, we've learned about directions requests. How can we use this within our app? How about after a user searches for locations within a certain journey time from work, we show them the route? Okay, so we're going to expand what we did last time. After the user looks for listings within a 30 minute walk of their office, say, we'll add a button inside that info window that appears to allow them to display the route that they would take to work. The first thing we'll do is add a button that says view route inside the little info window that appears when we search for places near work. This button will point to a new function called display directions, which we'll create below. If you remember from last time, we could have multiple listings that fall within our commute limit. So for each button we make, we'll pass in that origin. We have some funky quotes here so that we can pass in this string correctly as well. The origin that's passed is the listing's address, and the destination we'll use is the user entered address. Now we'll create our display directions function. This will actually calculate the directions and display the route on the map. We'll initialize a new direction service instance for this, just like the rest of our services. We'll recapture the user entered destination and travel mode. We'll then calculate the route, passing in the origin, the destination, and the travel mode. When we get back the response, we'll make sure that the status is OK. And then we'll create a new directions renderer. Remember the detailed steps and polyline from the web service response? This renderer takes care of displaying that information. Now at this point, we could display the route data to the user. We would just need to specify the HTML div to put the route in by setting the panel parameter in the directions renderer. There are some good examples of this in our developer documentation linked in the instructor notes. I'm not going to do that because I don't think our user needs to see the step-by-step -step directions in this case. But we are going to display the resulting polyline on the map. I'm going to specify to render that on our map. I'm going to tell it to get the directions from our route response. And I'm going to specify that I want the route to be draggable and green. If the routing was not successful, we're going to let the user know and show them the status code from the response. OK, let's look for the listings within the 30 minute walk of my office again. I'm going to view the route for this one. So going from our listing to the office, it looks like I would walk down 16th Street. And I think that would take me past a crepe place, which would be awesome. We'll talk more later about this, but there are some specific features that you only get access to by purchasing a Google Maps API license. I'm going to cover one of those features now in our directions request that falls into that category. Real-time traffic integration, or predictive traffic time, allows us to specify additional things and get back the predicted time in traffic. This is great for traffic-heavy areas, since the time in traffic can be drastically different from the time without. If we add the driving options parameter into the request, obviously the travel mode has to be driving for this to be effective, we have the option to specify a departure time, which is pretty cool if I want to give users, as an example, the option of calculating a travel time and route to the airport on Monday mornings. We can also specify a best guess, optimistic or pessimistic traffic model, which can give us the routes and travel times during lighter or heavier traffic days. Users may want to see a pessimistic value if they're the nervous Nelly type and want to be at the airport early. Feel free to check out the video linked in the instructor notes on predictive traffic time. We won't include that in our app right now. Let's test out some route optimization using direction service. 